you don't want to just build something because that's the way you build it. Um, that's how you build bad products. That's how you build products that uh, the client's not happy with. <laughs> uh, because there's there's lots of things that go into that those questions like um, what is the client willing to pay for ongoing you know so like let's say you wanted to build a project and you wanted to use all the Amazon Web Services uh, managed services you want to use API Gateway and Lambda functions and uh, Dy DynamoDB and and all the really cool you know you know SES and all these different things that I don't want to explain right now but you want to use all those really cool things, but the client doesn't want to use AWS or they prefer Azure, <laughs> right? Or they're already, they're already hooked into Microsoft stuff. And so Azure makes more sense or they don't want any of that stuff. They just want a monolithic uh, application or maybe through the requirements you find out this should be a desktop application. It shouldn't be a web application or this really should be a mobile application or, you know, you, you may, you may come into this with assumptions about the project that once you go through and look at the requirements and talk to the client and you may realize that your initial assumptions of how you would build it don't make sense for the industry or make sense for the client and, and their needs. So you always want to evaluate the project before you, uh, before you write a line of code, before you decide on what, uh, what languages and, and architecture you're going to use. Um, so yeah, we're not going to write code right away. We may not write any code until April. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but we want to talk through these beginning things so that you understand, um, even for yourself as a junior developer, um, if you take on a, a, a freelance gig, you want to be able to have the skill set and the knowledge to ask the right questions to decide how you're going to go about doing something. Now, you may end up still using the language that you prefer, the frameworks that you prefer, uh, the architecture that you prefer, that may still happen. The job, the company that I work for, we have lots of different types of developers, uh, but our bread and butter is Laravel development, which is a, a PHP framework. We do Laravel and Vue. It's kind of our, our main thing. Um, that's what we would prefer to work in uh, if we're starting a brand new project. But that's not all the projects that we have. And so we would, we, we, we want to do what is best for the client um, or what the client prefers as much as we possibly can. So yeah, architecture and, and, you know, coding languages, all that stuff is stuff that we want to do after we evaluate the process. And again, that's why the homework for today is go out there and take a look and see, see what the industry is like so that you have a better understanding of, of the industry and can ask the right questions, excuse me, in order to, um, in, in order to make those evaluations moving forward. I would say if we're building something from scratch, um, if we're building something brand new, we would typically go with what we're familiar with, right? So if I were building a project brand new, I would typically go with Laravel and Vue uh, because that's what I'm most familiar with right now. Now, I've used lots of other things. I've used Angular. I've used React. I've used Node. I've used a little bit of Java, not a lot. Um, I've used all these other different things and other frameworks, but what I'm working in right now, what I prefer right now is Laravel and Vue. Uh, and so if I'm starting on a greenfield project, a brand new project, um, that would be my instinct, but we always want to make sure that we're able to change and shift. Uh, I actually had a project that I was working on, uh, where it was Laravel and Vue, but it was, uh, the company wanted to use Azure. Well, I'm not a big Azure fan, to be honest with you. I'm not a big Microsoft fan, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but uh, but I would prefer to to do things on AWS. So we had to we had to adjust based on the client's preference, right? So um, that's okay. That that's part of being a good developer is the ability to to adjust and learn new things on the fly. 